Welcome to the Writer's Journey Podcast. I'm Michael Laron, a science fiction and fantasy author on a journey to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I pull back the curtain on my writing life and how I'm building a writing career while working a full-time job, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. You can find show notes for this week's episode, a free starter library of my fiction, and much more at michaellaron.com. Hello and welcome to episode 69. So in this week's episode, I wanted to talk about a few things that were on my mind and give you a quick book update on how things are going with my works in progress. So quick update on my works in progress. I have finished the mental model book. So it was a long train coming. I I finally got there. I think the book is about, it's either 80 or 90,000 words. I don't remember. I haven't checked lately, but it's Uh, The largest book that I've ever written, and the largest book that I've ever written so quickly. So I think I wrote this book in about six to eight weeks, I want to say. All in all, if you take out some of the days that I I wasn't able to write. So it's going to be a pretty big book, but I think it's going to be a a, a good one. Um, And if it doesn't doesn't succeed, then then that's fine. I'm not terribly worried about it. it. It's really more just thought leadership that I just want to put out into the world. And if people have ears to hear it, then they have ears to hear it. If they don't, then, you know, I'm, I'm in the land of the next book, right? <laughs> so it's going to my editor tonight. In fact, after I wrap up recording this podcast, it's Wednesday as I record this, I, as after I wrap this up and get it all uploaded off to the interwebs, I am going to send it off to my editor and um, should take her about two weeks to get it back to me. And this one will probably come out before the dictionary just because it's a lot more straightforward. I mean, it's just a traditional nonfiction book. There's no real complexity to it from a formatting perspective. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And then um, the dictionary is coming along, still waiting for some feedback. And I have some uh, formatting issues now that I need to start tackling on the paperback version, which is going to be a challenge. That's probably going to take a lot of time. So, But for those of you who are interested, what I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks is I am going to be opening up uh, a group of people who can uh, get get both of the books for free in exchange for an honest review. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned for a way to be able to get both of those books for free, which I think will be great resources for you, um, just in exchange for an honest review. And, and quite frankly, if you don't want to leave an honest review, if you hate them, then you don't have to review the book. That's fine, too. So, But stay tuned on that. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about this week was uh, an article that I read on Joanna Penn's blog. I think she released it last week, but I, I, I read it on Monday. And I think the article was called Nine Ways That Artificial Intelligence is Going to Disrupt the Writing Industry. And I read the article, it was probably it was like the first thing that I read when I woke up, and I just remember being disturbed by it. Not disturbed in a bad way. I mean, Joanna is a great writer, and her, she, she has great scholarship and thought leadership, and it was disturbing in a good way because it really forced me to really rethink everything I knew about artificial intelligence. And a lot of the things that she talks about in the article is technology that's here today that has the ability to disrupt the writing community, but it's just not mature enough to the point where it can, right? So this is more or less a warning sign to the writing community that if we don't adopt this technology, we are going to get left behind. So all, just like all those writers that didn't adopt self-publishing and, and still, uh, believe that that traditional publishing was the way to go back in like 2008, 2009, and how they got mired in tons of copyright contracts and um, made it very difficult for them to go indie 10 years ago. <laughs> this is going to be on that level, right? If you don't adapt to the times, if you don't figure out the technology and how to make it work for you, if you can't become a digital citizen of this technology, you're going to get left behind. And I think that that was very clear in her article, as well as in the books that she recommended. So at the very end of the blog post, there were a bunch of books that she recommended, and I I went out and immediately bought um, a fair amount of them. Um, And so I've I've been working my way through them via audio, and they're all substantially saying the same thing, which is that artificial intelligence is a disruptor. We all knew that, right? But that it's going to fundamentally change how 
everything is done in life. And, I, and, there, and there are two schools of thought on this, right? The, the first school of thought is that it's going to be a positive thing for humanity and we're all going to prosper, <laughs> you know, and, and kumbaya and so on and so forth. And then the other side of it, though, is the side that's a little bit more devious. And it's the, the future that disturbed me. And that is that this has the potential to be so disruptive that it will eliminate, not only will it eliminate jobs, it will eliminate jobs to the point where people have nothing to do. Right? You know, I, I mean, companies will no longer need employees for the most part. The number of jobs that humans can do will drastically decrease due to the rapidly advancing technology of the AI. And that got me thinking about, well, if that's true, then, you know, what are people going to spend their time doing? And so one of the things that Joanna Penn talked about in the article was that a lot more people are going to be content creators. So for those of you who are listening, who, you know, maybe you've thought about writing a book or maybe you've thought about writing, a, you know, writing a blog or a YouTube channel or a podcast or a screenplay, whatever that might be, there's going to be a lot more people like you in the future. So if you haven't started now, you better start or otherwise you're going to get left behind. And there's going to be so much content and, and a lot of that content is going to be created by AIs. So if you think about nonfiction being uh, written by an AI that is definitely uh, something that's on the horizon and something that's already actually here today. Um, I was watching some YouTube videos the other day, and I don't remember what it was. I was watching a YouTube video on something. I think I was looking up a mental model, and the video was just weird. Like, it was just very odd. Like, I th it sounded like like a machine was reading the, the script, like was the voice of the video, but then th the text didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Well, sure enough, that video was created by an AI, right? So th these things are here today, and for nonfiction, they're, people who write nonfiction are going to feel it faster <laughs> because it's here. And so uh, you think about AI starting to create content, and you think about writers, you know, you can't outwrite an AI. An AI will be able to write content faster than you can even think about writing content. And so there's going to be a lot more content. You think there's a lot of content now, there's going to be a lot more content in the future. And so how do we as writers navigate that? I'm not so sure that even my model of writing 10 to 12 books a year is going to be sustainable and it's going to help me stand out in this kind of environment. And that, yeah, that, that kind of got me depressed, you know, because it's like, I don't know. I, it, it just feels like with writing, there's such a premium on th the intellectual properties of an author's mind. And to think that in the future that that will be uh, something that society doesn't place as much of a premium, premium on is a little sad. And, and that's, that's, that's selfish on my part. But yeah, I just, that, that kind of depressed me a little bit. But I, but I said, okay, why am I feeling this way? And why is it that I'm not accepting the, the positives and the benefits uh, that AIs can offer? And so I've decided to make myself somewhat of a learn-it-all with AI and really understand the technology and understand automation and how that's going to impact writers moving forward. So I, I've talked a little bit about it on my YouTube channel, but I'm transitioning Author Level Up into what I believe is going to be a tool company. So, you know, you think about a, a lot of the writing services out there today uh, where they are helping writers with writing or they're helping writers with marketing. But there, there's a dearth of services and, and people out there that are actually talking about writing tools. And so my vision with Author Level Up 10 to 15 years from now is to create a company that is a tool company, right? Is that, That's a company that is known for creating useful and simple and delightful tools for writers. And those tools can include books, they include videos, they include speaking engagements, they include other resources that, you know, I haven't even thought of, right? And so I'm starting, you'll so, slowly start to see me move in that direction. And that's something I decided months ago, right? I'm just now starting to <laughs> realize that. But this article really made me uh, think about that in another light. I don't know that I'll talk about it a whole lot on the podcast here, because I don't know that uh, you all have signed up for that. But in my own personal life, you know, I'm having some conversations with people and developers about what kind of resources it would require to be able to build an AI that 
uh, writers can use. And I, I'm very unpleasantly finding out how expensive it is. I mean, we're talking millions of dollars to be able to create that technology. I don't know about you. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> so instead, um, what I think I'll be doing is really starting to start conversations about what the future of the writer's life looks like in the 21st century, because I don't know that very many people outside of Joanna Penn are talking about it. And I will also say that almost no one is talking about the future of tools that writers can be using in this new future. And I personally, you know, I talked about the two futures, right? The positive future and the negative future. And I, I think the majority of society kind of views AIs in this really neutral, weird kind of way. Like, we appreciate the technology, but at the same time, the moment that technology screws up, we're quick to say, no, no, it, it sucks. It sucks, right? I, I tend to fall somewhere in the middle. Um, I, I think that this this bad future is definitely something that is possible, but I do think that the future is brighter than we think it is. And I do think that there's this concept called the missing middle in, in AI, which is this idea that there's human technology in terms of what humans can do, human labor. So humans excel at making decisions and making judgments um, and reading emotions and, and all the things that humans do. And then there's artificial intelligence excellence. And artificial intelligence and bots, they specialize in data. They specialize in making decisions based on data and looking at things in the aggregate in ways that humans can't do. But there's this, there's this area in the middle where I think the future really rests in, which is why do, why do we have to be against AI? And why does AI have to be against us? Why can't we use AI as a way to become better writers? Why can't we use AI as a way to become super authors, right? So imagine all the things that you're doing today as a writer. You're writing your book. You're doing your research. You're marketing your book. You are um, looking at marketing and analytics for the sales of your book. You're doing bookkeeping. You're doing all these things, but you're probably doing it the hard way. Why not have an AI that can help you with a lot of these things, right? And so I think that's the, that's the future I want to live in. That The future I want to live in is a future where I can wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I can come down into my studio. I can shoot a video. And after I've shot my video, I can upload it to my computer and an AI edits the video based on intelligence and algorithms and then gets my final sign off on it. And then it uploads it to YouTube for me with optimization and keywords so, such that I don't really even have to do anything. And the AI could even create the thumbnails for my video, right? So that I don't have to spend that money on a video editor and that I can spend more time doing things that I do best, right? I want an AI that when I sit down on a computer or on my phone can look at what I'm writing and help me be a better version of myself. So it can look at the things that I've written in the past and the things that my editor has recommended in the past on my last 20 novels. And it can look at the changes that I accepted from my editor versus the changes that I rejected from my editor. And then it can recommend edits to me in real time, not to eliminate my editor, right? Because I don't think necessarily that editors are going away. I think their profession is going to be in much more danger than ours is in the near future. But I, I don't think it's going away. But what if an AI could help you prepare a book for an editor in a better way? What if an AI could help you prepare a book for audio as you're writing in real time? Maybe there are things that narrators have trouble saying that as you're writing in real time, the AI can say, hold on a second, uh, maybe you should consider rephrasing this, right? What if there's an AI that as I was writing knew my peak moments of performance or knew when I was getting into flow? What if that AI sets my computer to do not disturb and allows me to keep going? What if the AI could sense that I was tired and um, could could um, jump in and start making recommendations as I'm writing? What if an AI could help me do research better? So if I say, uh, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm getting into, I'm taking the character to this 13th century church. Give me some ideas of what a 13th century church would look like. And that AI could become my muse and it could go off on the internet and return tons of different pictures um, based on what I'm looking for and curate images and curate audio and curate video that it thinks that I might want to see in order to inspire me. 
right? That's what I'm talking about by being a super author, right? AIs that can help you with every step in the writing process to help you become a better version of yourself. AIs that can help you with marketing, that can look at your Facebook ad performance and make recommendations based on how your ads are performing. Because quite frankly, a lot of authors don't do it well, myself included. (laughs) And I think we would benefit from an AI that could do that far better than we could benefit for doing it ourselves or hiring somebody for thousands of dollars to manage our ads. I think whoever's in that industry, I think they should be very worried about the future of AI because I guarantee you an AI will be able to do pay-per-click advertising far better than a human will. Maybe not today, but 10 years from now. So I, I want, that's the kind of future that I want, right? And in talking with a lot of developers and talking with people who have a little bit of experience with AI, you know, th- that some of the things that I'm recommending are not, um, they're not doable today, right? And they may be uh, 10, 15 years into the future, but I think it's worth us starting to recognize the future that we want to live in and starting to recognize the tools that we are going to need so that we can start articulating that to developers, to the people that are making our writing apps, to the people that are um, going to be making the AIs that we are going to be using in the future. Um, I, I think that we have to start being the drivers of that conversation because if we are not, we're going to end up in a situation where we are now as writers, where Amazon just drives the bus and you either get hit by the bus or you you have to hang on for dear life and you have no control over where the industry is going. And I think that we have to do a better job of doing what Orna Ross says, um, founder of Ally, of being creative directors of our careers. Right. And so that's something that you may hear me start talking about a lot more because it's something that I found out that I was really interested in that I didn't know. (laughs) So um, I'm thinking about ways that I can uh, kind of socialize this. If you if you found this podcast interesting, please, would you do me a favor and just let me know? I just want to know if people are really thinking about this, uh, if it's something that's on your radar, if it's something that's not. My suspicion is that it's not on a lot of people's radar because it's so incomprehensible that people really aren't thinking about it and they really don't know what AI is, um, what the power of it is. Uh, and it, it scares a lot of people, right? To be honest with you, I, I really I really do think it scares a lot of people. And I think what we have to do and what we owe ourselves is a way to face the technology in a way that maybe it scares us, but that we can start controlling it, right? And so... I don't know if that's the, the science fiction part of me that uh, is, is talking today. I'm not sure. Um, but that's kind of some of the things that have been on my mind lately. And um, yeah. So anyway, I hope everyone is having a great day. I recognize that as this video is launching, or not video, my goodness, I'm tired. <laughs> as this podcast is launching, it is the 4th of July in the United States. So I hope that Everyone, all of my um, uh, United States compatriots here are having a good day. Uh, certainly be safe. Don't, uh, don't blow your arm off with fireworks or anything. Nothing will um, uh, destroy your word count like a, like a trip to the emergency room. So be safe. Have a great holiday. And I'll holler at you next week. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll enjoy my backlist episodes at michaelaron.com slash podcast. For your free starter library of my favorite novels, join my fan club by visiting michaelaron.com slash fan club. If you're a writer and want to connect with me further, check out my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, for helpful writing advice at authorlevelup.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next week.